Okay, so you have three minutes left on the ACT math section and you're only on question 46. So what do you do? Well, you don't just start bubbling answers frantically and hope for the best. What you do instead is you start skimming. You start skimming and you're looking for a diagram because on the ACT and on the SAT, diagrams are drawn to scale unless otherwise noted. And so you come across this question. And this question looks really scary at first, but you take a deep breath and you underline the goal. The goal is to find the length of AC and AC is right here and it's right next to this line that is marked one and it's way smaller than that four so it's just about one now for this dramatization what I've done is already taken the answers and plugged them into the calculator but what you'll see is that the first choice is the only one that's even close to one the other ones are 5.2 2.0 10.5 and this last one is two so what we do is we circle F we call it a day, and then you can go ahead and frantically bubble in the other answers. But at least you've gotten this point. Don't let the trolls at College Board fool you with a question like this. When we have exponents outside of parentheses, we need to make sure to distribute that exponent to both things inside the parentheses. In doing so, the numerator here becomes 4 times 3 squared, which is 9, times x squared, which is x squared, all over the denominator, which is 2 squared, which is 4, times x squared, which is x squared. We bada bing and bada boom, and we're left with our answer, which is 9. Say that you have factoring issues, that you got a little bit of a fear factor. That's all right. You may have been paying attention and realizing that I'm a big fan of plugging in numbers, and that's exactly what we're going to do on a question like this. Now, look at this. It says for all x greater than 21. Well, let's use 22. That's greater than 21. We'll just throw it in our calculator. We have 22 squared plus 8 times 22 plus 7, close parentheses, times 22 minus 3, and that gives us 12673. What about the bottom? We have 22 squared plus 4 times 22 minus 21, close parentheses, times 22 plus 1. And what do we have in the bottom? Oh, wow, look at that, the exact same number. Well, the number divided by itself is going to give us 1. But let's just go through our other answers just to ascertain that we have the right answer with this. Now, it's not 9 over 7. That's greater than 1. It can't be 22 minus 3 over 22 plus 3. That's not the same thing on the top and the bottom. This is not going to be the same thing on the top and the bottom. And this is not going to be the same thing on the top and bottom. Plus, it's a negative. Look at that. So, what we got is F. You know that the SAT and ACT tests foreign languages? No, I'm not talking about Spanish, French, or Latin. What I'm talking about is math. And what you want to do when you approach a word problem on the SAT or ACT is translate it from English to math. Specifically, remember this. Of means multiply, and per means divide. Specifically, per cent means divide by cent, 100. So I see 40 per cent. What I do is 40 over 100. Of means multiply, 250 is equal to, you guessed it, equal sign, 60 per divide cent hundred of multiply x. What number? So, I go ahead and I simplify. Let's cross out these zeros. Let's cross out these zeros. 4 times 25, well, that's 100. Equals, and cross out these zeros. 6 divided by 10, I can simplify that to 3 over 5x. And then I go ahead, cross multiply this part. I get 500 over 3 equals x. What's 500 divided by 3? Well, it's none other than our answer, h. Boom. The SAT and the ACT are obsessed with triangles, and specifically, right triangles. Look at this question over here. It tells us that AD is parallel to BC, and CD is half of AB. Let's mark that up. AD has to intersect CD at a right angle because it's parallel to BC. And we know that this is half, we'll call that X, of this, 2X. What we should do is go ahead and break this into a square and a right triangle. This is a right angle. This is a right angle. This is a right angle because this is a square. So now we've got to figure out what this angle is. And guess what? Since this is X, this is X. Build an instinct into your head about what exact triangle this is. If you don't know, I'll show you in the formula section. X, 2X, that tells us that that triangle we just saw has a 60 degree angle up here. So if this is 60 degrees and this is 90 degrees, together they are 150 degrees, which is our answer, A. Boom, crush it, prepsters.